Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today we got episode 5 of TKL Fridays, the series where every Friday we do a straightforward and honest mechanical keyboard review over a 10 keyless mechanical keyboard. As you all know by now, 10 keyless is my favorite layout out of all of them and that's why we're doing this series. So today we have one that is more budget friendly, cost about $80 when we purchased it, it is the IKBC CD87 mechanical keyboard. Now this is one of Wirecutter's recommendations for mechanical keyboards. It is their budget recommendation and it also comes in a Bluetooth version, but we got the wired version, which is why you see this clump of wires right here. And this one has Cherry MX blue switches, so it's a little bit clicky but it's crispy. And I don't think we've reviewed any mechanical keyboards with Cherry MX Blues on this channel, so stay till the end to get that sound test. So the Bluetooth version costs about $120, which is fairly priced for a Bluetooth keyboard. However, there are cheaper options out there. We're primarily going to be talking about the wired version that we have and then sprinkle in some information about the Bluetooth version. If you're interested, links are down below and you can check that out if you want. Let's jump into the keyboard. Okay, so we always like to start with the back because you know, you're never gonna see it again except now. So the back is quite normal. It is a attached wire and it's quite thick. It's a rubber wire and it does have a Velcro tie to organize your wires when it's not in use. We see that it has four rubber feet and then dual angle adjustment kickstands for you to get that incline that you like to game or type at depending on what you like. There's also wire routing. We can go straight up, we can go to the left, or we can go to the right. I find that a little bit odd that we can only go left or right but not right and then up or left and then up. I guess I can see how this could work for someone whose computer is to the right or to the left directly of their keyboard. It makes sense. And that is it for the back. For the front, we have a very clean 10 keyless layout. We got the indicators above the navigational cluster. You can do caps lock or scroll lock. We have a natural incline, very beautiful, with a LEM profile keycap set. That's cool and whatnot. The legends are very clean, very simple, not like super bright and popping and in your face. The O's are connected, the Q's are connected. I think I hate unconnected legends. That might be why I don't like gamer legends. So moving on, we got the function row here. We do have some secondary functions in our function row. However, it is not indicated on the legends. So we got F, Fn, if, well, you have to press Fn and one of these. So F1, we got mute, F2, volume down, F3 volume up and F4 is the calculator. It's a little odd, but it works. And then we have a very, very subtle branding on the right side of the space bar. So subtle that, well, if you replace all your keycaps, you're pretty much gonna be left with a very clean looking black keyboard that you can't even tell what company made it or where it belongs. The heft of this keyboard is quite high. When I first picked it up straight out of the box, I was like, ooh, this is, this is a brick. It's quite thick and it's very sturdy. It does have that metal back plate, but the build on the outside is all plastic. But if you do try to flex it, it's very minimal and very small quite hefty indeed. And then if we look at the keycaps themselves, they are made out of PBT plastic, which is a higher quality plastic than ABS. This means that no matter how much you use it, you're not going to accumulate a ton of oil stains or sweats, finger oils, you know, whatever happens 
when you're playing games and it's real intense. Also, don't eat around your keyboards. We don't advise that, but if you do, you know, it's sort of okay, but not really, don't do that. All right, Cherry MX Blues, they have an actuation force of 60 grams, total resistance of four millimeters and actuation distance of two millimeters. This is very common among many switches and they are pretty much uniform among most of the more common Cherry MX switches. And just a preliminary sound test, full sound test at the end. Here are the stabilizers. And here are the switches. So a clean, crispy click, however, not as clicky as some of the kale switches that we've tried before. The reason for this is because Cherry MX uses a click jacket for their clicks, so you really only get the click on the way down. However, some of the click bar switches, you'll get the click on the way down and the way back up. So it just depends on what you like in your keyboard. Personally, I don't like clicky switches at all, but if I was going to go with a clicky switch, it would probably be a click bar switch. I think in our kale switches videos, I'll link those right here. I did rank my top three clicky switches. So check out that video if you're interested in what my favorite clicks are. Out of the box with this keyboard, you get the keyboard itself, you get the warranty card. So you do get one year warranty on the keyboard. You get a wire keycap puller, which is great. It actually has become my not favorite keycap puller. I prefer the Circa ones with the little claws that way you can pull it out real quick. Um, but this one's great because you can pull out more than one keycap at a time without having to empty your keycap puller. And then it also comes with 10 PBT keycaps, five in red and five in blue. So you can customize the escape and arrow keys or the WASD for gaming or whatever you want. It looks pretty cool. However, they are a little bit awkward shaped and you'll just have to look at the side and the profile of the keyboard to see which keys go where exactly. So that was a little bit strange. The reason for I realized this is because I put one of the weirder keys on my escape key and something just wasn't looking right. And then I realized, oh, they're all different because of their profile. And the profile of the keycaps of this keyboard is an OEM profile. See the link down below to our blog post where we wrote all about keycap profiles and different kinds. And there's some graphics there that will really help you see the difference between all the different profiles. Super helpful link. Check that out after you watch this video. Actually, middle click it. Don't click off the video because we're still talking about the keyboard. But yes, OEM profile keycaps. Pretty much the standard of what you get for all your keycaps in most manufactured keyboards unless you're specifically looking for something really different like DSA, XDA, or things like that. We do have a video where we talked about five different keycap sets that we looked at and one of them was an SDA keycap set, which is very unique. So check that out if you want to. So we did get Cherry MX Blues, but it does come with different uh, Cherry MX switches that are available for you to pick from. And that is brown, red, blue, and clear, but they're rarely available, especially the browns. The browns are almost always sold out for some reason. And there are no dip switches. It is compatible with Mac and Windows. However, on Mac, you're gonna have to go into the settings and change some of the buttons and function out a little bit. On the Bluetooth version, there are dip switches or DIP switches on the back that let you change some of the functionality of your keys, like the tab, control, alt, windows, things like that. The Bluetooth version does have a detachable cable. This one does not, as you can see, and we could keep complaining about it. Overall, this is a very nicely built mechanical keyboard. I can see why Wirecutter ranked this as one of their best budget mechanical keyboards. 
and I can say the same. I don't think I've seen any other mechanical keyboard at this price point, around $80, that has Cherry MX switches and PBT keycaps. The only problem is that it's a detachable cable, but for the quality build of this keyboard, I would say I'm gonna give that a pass. Rarely will you see keyboards of this price range have these features. Uh, if we look at any of our budget keyboards, we have a mixed bag of features. However, none of them have Cherry MX switches and none of them have PBT keycaps. However, you can always upgrade your keyboard with PBT keycaps for about $20 to $40, um, but it is an investment, definitely. So for something out of the box, this is a really great mechanical keyboard for those of you who are new to the hobby and would really like some quality switches and a quality build. This is a great pick to choose from. There's other ones too. We've covered a bunch of different keyboards in our top 10 mechanical keyboards under $100. I'm gonna link this right up here. All right, TKL Fridays. We always do this thing called TGIF. Thank goodness it's Friday. What's something that happened this week that you were really proud of and really happy to show the world? For us, it was seeing our blog grow in visitors and views and seeing our YouTube channel grow to where it is too. We started in January 6, 2020, and this has been a very exciting last four months of our lives with the channel and the blog and so much interaction from you guys and just so many like buttons although some of you do press that thumbs down button but we're cool with that it's okay we're all entitled to our own opinions it's fine but i would really like to know why if you do thumbs down the video like leave a comment and give us a suggestion on some somehow we can improve but yep that's my tjif moment growth on everything and just seeing our hard work become something more than just us. But leave, leave a comment down below saying what was your best moment this week or what are you super proud of this week? Uh, and then let's do the typing test right now. It's a full minute so if you don't want to watch the whole thing you can skip forward but hope you enjoy and hope you can hear some of the different sounds. All right, that was the typing test. Press like if you're getting any value from this review at all, because I hope you are. Overall, really great keyboard, highly recommended. Rank five, I believe, on our top 10 under $100. Really great keyboard, no complaints, zero complaints. I'm gonna link you to that playlist on top 10 keyboards under 100 here, and then our TKL Friday series here, where we only review more TKL mechanical keyboards and subscribe here if you want to. If not, that's cool. I'll see you in the next video.